हरे कृष्णा डज रिलीजन मेक ह्यूम प्राउड एंड साइंस मेक पीपल हम्बल आंसर इट डिपेंड्स ऑन विच एस्पेक्ट ऑफ साइंस एंड विच एस्पेक्ट ऑफ रिलीजन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट let's consider first where this particular thought and the corresponding claim come from it arises from western intellectual history especially in terms of the effect of the darwinian theory of evolution on human self understanding so before the theory of evolution was proposed the judeo christian world view was prominent in the west and the judeo christian world view was based not just on the bible but also biblical theology integrated with greco roman concepts especially here in terms of cosmology so therefore the christian world view uh, which was <clears throat> a hybrid of these two factors so held that the earth was the center of the universe and that humans were special being a, being the only possessors of souls or especially the kind of souls that could have the light of reason by which they could know god so basically humans had a special place within nature and a special place within the universe and the advancement of science first of all from galileo's time onwards when he showed that actually the planets the celestial objects don't move around the earth the earth moves around the sun so that displays the earth from the center of the universe and then subsequently evolution claimed to have shown that humans were nothing special we were just evolved apes so again humans were moved away displaced from the center of nature and this displacement of humans from the center of the universe in the sense center of nature was what science called as bringing humans down to humility from the high peg of pride on which christian theology a christian world view had placed them now that is just one way of looking at it if we consider from the vedic world view there are three factors in play three fundamental components of reality there is there are we living beings so this could be called as jiva then there is nature which is called as prakriti which can also be called as jagat and then there is the supreme consciousness known by different names in different traditions god krishna ultimate reality absolute truth so that can be called as here jagdish so if you use the alliterative three words jiv jagat and jagdish so science removes jagdish the ultimate reality from the equation either for methodological or even metaphysical purposes then what we are left with is the interaction of jiva and jagat we as living beings and the world around us so in this interaction what happens primarily we can consider that yes the christian world view held that we humans are special above nature because god has in the form of jesus came to deliver us specially so jiva is raised above jagat and the darwinian world view says that no jiva is just another part of jagat however that is just one part of one way of looking at that uh, picture and the primary contribution of religion is not our view of nature of the world of the universe jagat but it is our view of jagadish and the view of the all of reality in in those terms so even we consider the christian world view to some extent if we consider it in relationship with god it brings submission it brings humility at least in relationship with god however along with that there is a elitist uh, mentality sometimes an entitled mentality that comes because we are the chosen people of god or we have been saved by god and that the earth is meant for our dominion all living beings are meant for us to uh, use for our purposes so that could possibly foster 
a worldview of entitlement and exploitation that could be called pride but if you consider the vedic worldview it is that we understand that we are to be the primary relationship of every living being is with the ultimate reality and that relationship has to be characterized by humility because we are servitors of the divine so the religious world view first of all will bring humility in relationship with the divine and then with uh, that's with so jiva's relationship with Jag jagdish and then what about jiva's relationship with jagat so first of all we understand that even this material world is not ours it is also god's and we are just passing through this temporarily and we need to live in harmony with it so the universe is also seen as the body of god the universal form the vishwarupa and that infuses even nature with the vision of the sacred and that's why there is respect for it the vedic ethos vedic world view and especially the view of nature is probably among the most eco friendly views of nature along with that while we can see nature as god's uh, as god's body and take care of it we can see nature's beauty as also manifesting god's glory and we can appreciate that and beyond that there is also the understanding that this is maya and it has to be respected because we can get deluded within it so the relationship between jiva and jagdish jagat is also one of respect due respect not one of entitlement and exploitation so it can bring in humility and even reverence on top of that further if we consider going back to the original points which came from the christian world view which led to the uh, allegation of human arrogance the vedic world view doesn't say that the earth is the center of the universe in fact the vedic world view doesn't even say there's one universe there are many many universes so it doesn't place humans at the center of the universe at all uh, or center of existence for that matter and it doesn't say that humans are a special act of create special a result of special act of creation we humans are actually similar to all other living beings in terms of our body and the biological functions however there is a difference so the christian world view say that humans are completely different from animals and the evolutionary world view will say that we are practically not different from animals at all but the vedic world view says yes as far as boy bodies are concerned the bodies are biologically very similar to other bodies they have biological functions similarly at the same time there is a spiritual essence to all of us and that soul has a more evolved consciousness when it is in the human body and that's how it can utilize the greater cognitive faculties that are there with the human body for pursuing meaning and purpose in life even ethologists those who study animal behavior acknowledge that the quest for meaning and purpose is a distinctively human quest animals are primarily driven by survival and reproduction humans do that but humans are driven by something higher also so yes humans are special not in category but in degree not that we belong to entirely different category of existence as if we are created by a special act of god but rather in degree our consciousness is far more developed as compared to other human beings but if we don't utilize this higher consciousness then we can relapse to the lower species also so in that sense we don't consider humans as lording above uh, above rest of existence because of some special entitlement we have rather yes we have the capacity to think beyond what the biological drives that we are given because of having material bodies in in ex material existence because of being in nature we can think about it but if we don't utilize that faculty this is a gift this is not something we are entitled to this is something we are endowed and if we don't use it we we'll lose it so even that brings humility as a gift so our very humanity is a gift and therefore our very humanity can bring humility so in terms of which quality whether pride uh, arrogance or humility will be fostered in human beings by either science or religion the point here is not one upsmanship 
point is we humans have these vulnerabilities within us we, we all can become proud and in religion people can get an elitist mentality because we are special we are god chosen people and that can make them proud can say we have got the revelation of god and this is perfect knowledge that's why we are we are we may become proud in science also an elitist mentality can come up you know we we don't believe in this revelation um, sentiment nonsense we rely on logic and reason and this is the most reliable form of knowledge and therefore we we are real intellectuals that can lead to pride that can lead to even a dismissal as sentimental anyone who considers anything beyond the universe that leads to scientism which is imperialism uh, covering science so science plus imperialism is scientism so that is also a possibility so ultimately it is individual human beings who can become proud through science and through religion those vulnerabilities those weaknesses are there in every human heart having said that any we humans can use or abuse or misuse any resource science or religion for uh, becoming proud which is more fast cult likely to counter pride if we consider within most religious traditions humility is consciously and constantly stressed as a virtue whether it is in the christian tradition where it is said that the meek and the humble shall inherit the kingdom of god or in the bhagavad gita where it is said that amanitvam the first quality of a person in knowledge is humility it's consciously stressed within the scientific world view there may be science scientists individually who have a profound sense of humility and wonder when they observe nature and its splendor but there's nothing within the method within the scientific uh, process of acquiring knowledge within scientific education that consciously stresses humility to the contrary as science gives us more and more power over nature through technology it is relatively very easy to become inflated with a greater sense of self importance and overestimation of human capacity francis bacon who was one of the pioneers of the application of scientific method said knowledge is power and he meant it specifically that technological power technological knowledge coming from science would give us power over nature to bend it to human will and that when it has been affected in the subsequent centuries has led to a lot of problems especially in terms of our indiscriminate exploitation of natural resources and the disruption of delicate ecological balances which have all brought humanity to the precipice of what could possibly be a environmental catastrophe so the idea that we can change nature for the better without considering that what are the delicate ways in which nature may be balancing itself that itself is a sign of hubris and this hubris has come because of uh, as a result of technology so science and technology especially in terms of the effect that they have on general human psychology are much more likely to foster pride arrogance hubris than humility because in today's world how many people even think at oh we thought we were in the center of the universe and now we are not and that is going to make us humble no most people think oh through technology i can do this and i can do that i can do that and that makes a person see feel uh, a sense of overestimation of their capacities and that can very easily lead to pride and especially if god is removed from the picture then all that stops humans from lording it over nature is just the limitation of the technological capacities that we have and that world view has been disastrous for ecology and that's why we humans are slowly moving towards recognizing that our relationship with the relationship of jiva with jagat cannot be one of domination exploitation it has to be one of harmony of cooperation and possibly synergy and that is also an indication of humility that is coming so gradually in our approach to the universe and in fact many environmental scientists are themselves acknowledging that just telling people how much danger there can be in the future 
because of environmental problems is not enough to get them to change their behavior. And that's why even atheistic and materialistic scientists sometimes opportunistically appeal to religious and spiritual leaders to infuse within their followers environmental consciousness by, talk, by infusing within their vision of nature as sacred. That means this is the scientific worldview cannot persuade people that nature is sacred, but the religious worldview can. And that's what will make them take greater care of the universe. So, so that means to bring in humility, science is also turning records to religion, even those scientists who consider religious truths to be just a illusion, even a positive illusion or negative illusion, but they think it can be positively tapped. Because the scientific worldview doesn't bring in humility in that sense. That's a uh, acknowledgement tacit by scientists that we need religion to bring in humility. And one more point is that the scientific worldview uh, which uh, reduced humans, which say displaced humans from the center of the universe and the center of nature, as a logical fallout of that, it didn't just infuse humili humility into human beings. It actually stripped meaning out of human existence. Because if we are just stardust come alive, if we are just a bag of protoplasm that is temporarily flapping about for a brief flicker of time, that we come from nothing and end in nothing, then human existence itself becomes utterly meaningless. And that can be psychologically severely damaging. And that kind of sense of meaninglessness of our existence, worthlessness of our existence, that is not humility. That is psychologically damaging. And we humans need a cosmic sense of mattering, that our existence matters, that our endeavors matter. And that is provided by religion. So in terms of what worldview is more psychologically healthy, uh, we can clearly say that meaning is required for people to be not succumb to depression, not succumb to self-destructive behavior, and not just give in to life's give up because of life's distresses. And that sense of meaning is provided by religion. So this is not to, again, I said, one upsmanship of religion over science. The point is that science and religion both can be resources which we can use for living. To a large extent, science can provide us answers to the how questions. You know, how do I contact somebody in another part of the world? How do I travel from here to there? How do I get information of what is happening in another part of the world? So how questions that science can provide powerful answers, but the why questions, why do I exist? The questions of purpose and meaning that ultimately religion provides the answers to those. And the, the so science can provide means, religion provides meaning. And we need both. And comparatively speaking, there is there are many, many means in today's world, but meaning is lacking. And that's why so many people are succumbing to psychological health problems far more than before. And that's why we need both resources rather than putting them in competition. We can understand the scope of each resource and then use them in a way that fosters our psychological health and ultimately provides us spiritual fulfillment by helping us live a life that is filled with meaning and purpose. Thank you. Hare Krishna.